using the parlays against one another, right, and being able to get a little bit of juice can sig, I found to be a little interesting. Believe me, all the rhombuses and parallelograms are constantly trying to search and find out those things every day. It's one of the battles that you, use, you know, as you expand the menu, you encounter new battles. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. How fragile are these guys? It's amazing. They're supposed to be the greatest athletes in the world, and yet they can't walk and chew gum at the same time without getting hurt, for goodness sakes. That trout injury really is a bummer, too, because people thought he was going to have a big a big year. And I, I look, I don't feel bad for the Angels. I, I, I don't like Mike Trout in Anaheim. I thought he should have left when his contract was up. In game live, prime time only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24 7 sports wagering network. The early the magical line. and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Luka is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late Night. This sort of written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Welcome to hour number two, live right here on the early line on this first day following Memorial Day weekend, the first day of a new week, albeit a Tuesday here across the Spiz Grizz Network. That is Sports Grid. He is Donnie Wright's side. I am Ben Stevens. Still two more hours to go live right here on TEL. And on this Tuesday, it is game number four of the Western Conference Finals tonight in Dallas. Is it the final game Of the WCS, the Mavs, WCF, excuse me, the Mavs hold a 3-0 series advantage over the Minnesota Timberwolves. The T-Wolves entered this series as the short favorites, and now it's Dallas fully in control. We will preview game number two in this segment. We'll go around the world of sports throughout this second hour and get a deeper dive into the NBA playoffs around the association with our coach, James Young, to end out this second hour. So, DRS, let's start. With game number four tonight in Dallas, I'll ask you very simply, is this the final game of the Western Conference Finals that sees the Mavericks as a two-point home favorite? As a content person, I hope not, because it's fun talking about big basketball games on a night-to-night basis. We're already out of big basketball games in the Eastern Conference, and quite frankly, it felt like we never even got a big basketball game in the Eastern Conference playoffs here. Now we see the Boston Celtics advancing into the NBA Finals, but what has changed from games one, two, and three? Most of these games have been close, but you're still giving the edge in the big moments here to the Dallas Mavericks and their superstar players. But also, I said this on Sunday, just around family, having a barbecue, Hey, Donnie, what do you think about that game tonight? The first thing I looked at was the spread. It was Dallas minus one and a half against the Timberwolves. And I said to myself, boy, that is a lot of respect for the Minnesota Timberwolves. We'll only be getting one and a half points here on the home court of the Dallas Mavericks. And then seeing Luka Doncic come up with a questionable tag as if he might not play in that game. Hey, new series here. Didn't matter. 41 minutes as I talked about Luka Doncic here. And away we go to game number four. And then you see the spread now currently at the FanDuel Sportsbook at two. Still a lot of respect for the Minnesota Timberwolves. But what is going to get me to get back to the Minnesota Timberwolves tonight? Hey, I was already been banking on Anthony Edwards having a really good series in a bounce back. Haven't really seen that all that much, even though we told him, stay off the three-point line, get to the rim. And he did that in their last game. But Carl Anthony Towns is nowhere to be found. So who am I to come into this game and say, Minnesota should win this and extend it back because they haven't shown me anything, Ben, that they can do any of that. 
Listen, Anthony Edwards better in game three, still not great in game number yeah. three, only two threes from the Ant-Man, but 11 of 24 mm -hmm. from the field. He said prior to that third game, I'm attacking the rim. You guys have questioned my shot selection. You will see it pay off in game number three. I'm calling my own number. And he did that to the tune of a team high 26 points for Minnesota. But what really has altered all that much in any of these three games? Donnie is correct. Not much. Luka has been sensational, scoring 30-plus in all three. Kyrie has scored 30 or more in two of the three games to this point. Luka Doncic had 32 points, 13 boards, and 10 dimes, and the game-winning step-back three over Rudy Gobert in game number two. Historic playoff performances out of the Dallas Mavericks. It's going to sound dumb, but I think the only handicap that you can have for game number four is saying we're not going to see two sweeps in the conference finals round, and I expect the Timberwolves to get at least one. If you're looking at Minnesota, it's a money line play on the T-Wolves tonight, and I would argue, DRS, we have seen all three games trend to the over here in the Western Conference Finals. And the Mavericks have, of course, won all three of these games. In Minnesota's four wins in their second round series against Denver, all four games stayed under the pregame number. In game number four tonight is the highest total we have seen. Games one and two, 207 for the over-under at close. Game three up ever so slightly at 207 and a hook. Now we're up by three and a half points. If the Timberwolves are going to win, does defense stand tall tonight? Keeping us under, and it is an elimination game, and often in elimination games, things button up ever so slightly. That would be my look, even if just to say, let's see some more basketball until June 6th. Because, again, the NBA final schedule is set. It doesn't matter if both of the conference finals end in a sweep. Our first game of the NBA finals is next Thursday, June 6th. <laughs> That's pretty crazy, right? Because you want that momentum off of the Eastern and the Western Conference Series. You don't want to let it simmer. And it's also not like a Titanic matchup, like it's the Lakers and the Celtics in 1986, where you need a week to get the hype going, like it's a Super Bowl and everybody will be there. Now, granted, once the NBA, if it does take nine days off, we'll be right here to preview that all the way along. But we don't want to see that quite yet. We'd like to see some drama moving forward. And also, as we know, the hardest game typically to win is the closeout situation. Now, granted, you're not closing out like the Boston Celtics were on the road against the Pacers. You had a really close fourth quarter where they needed a comeback, and they held the Pacers to 19 points. You're Dallas. You don't want to see this go five. So that means you got to take the plane flight over. You give the Minnesota Timberwolves a little bit of crack here to win at home. And then you go back for game six and hopefully you can close it out then. You want to close this game out right away. And from my initial stance on this game, look, I am rooting for Minnesota because I just want to see more basketball with more opportunities to handicap and see how the series evolves. But I've seen nothing sure. over the first three games that I can reach into my pocket and say, you know what? This is what makes some sense to do tonight. Because quite frankly, trusting Anthony Edwards, you should be able to do that on a night-to-night -night basis. We haven't been able to. Carl Anthony Towns should at least play that Robin role. Like, hey, man, I'm open for threes. I'll make a couple. That's what I do. He's been ice cold. Is the only guy you can come into this game like, you know what? I trust Nas Reed's going to get in the double digits here. And that's <laughs> the way you go. But if Nas Reed is your go-to guy in game number four of an elimination game, maybe you've already been eliminated in your mind at this point. Because you need the big efforts from your superstars. They just for sure haven't been there for Minnesota. And it's a shame because they played so well up to this point just to not play so well in the first three games. Yeah, so let's look at the props. We'll start with Dallas. Would you look anywhere else outside of Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving at this moment? No, Kyrie well over that points prop in two of the three games, 30-plus in games one and three. P.J. Washington has been okay, but it really has been the Luka and Kyrie show throughout the first three games of the WCF. Luka Doncic has continued to fill up the stat sheet outside of just the points performances, but I would still go over three and a half. I wouldn't bet an under expecting regression when I look at Dallas's outlook for this fourth game. 
Yeah, you're right about that, too, because you, if you're looking just at Luka itself and say, if they're going to win this basketball game, what is he going to do, score 21? No, he's probably going to go off and also taking a look at that triple doubles market, which I believe had him at a plus 320 price earlier this morning. That's the way I would look at it. I could easily see him get 20-plus points in this game, 11 rebounds, you know, 10 assists, knocking down five three-point shots. That's a possibility. But you know what also is one? And if you're still sitting back just waiting here and you're saying, Anthony Edwards, show me something. He was close last last game, Ben. What do you have? 25-plus points, nine assists, and nine rebounds. His triple-double yes. market, not like the guys we usually talk about, plus 320, plus 210, on, let's just say, some MVP guys, 27-1 to one for a triple-double. If you're Anthony Edwards tonight and you say, I'm leaving it all out there, let's see what happens tonight because he was close to a triple-double, and he's got a monster triple-double price at 27-1 to one tonight. He was very close to a triple-double, and throughout this series – Anthony Edwards has been stacking it up in terms of rebounds and assists. Yeah. He was one board, one dime shy of that triple-double in game number three. He is taking the onus. In fact, he has had at least seven assists in all three games. He has had 11 rebounds and nine rebounds in games one and three, respectively. And you'll look outside of the points prop at the Ant-Man and see six and a half rebounds, six and a half assists, Tonight, mm -hmm. he knows the offensive onus is on his shoulders because of how abysmal Carl Anthony Towns has been. And I'll put it this way. If Cat is bad tonight, he is in for a long summer of slander continuously by NBA Twitter and fans. He is 3 of 22 from 3 in this series, Donnie. Has to be better if Minnesota has any chance tonight. Correct. You can't just rest on your laurels and say, oh, I just haven't played well. Let me like just pass the basketball. If the three is there, you got to continue to take it because they're going to give it to you. But also, in the biggest moments, are we saying we can't hurt his feelings? Let's see if Nas Reed gets more ball tonight. Some PGA Tour talk up next here on the early line. Whether it's a charge or a block or a, a you know a, a deflection that was wrong or a foul that should be called that one wasn't called or vice versa, give me a 48 minute report and people that will understand that there's so many mistakes that the referees make over the course of the game that referees, ready folks, don't decide the outcome. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. are these guys it's amazing they're supposed to be the greatest athletes in the world and yet they can't walk and chew gum at the same time without getting hurt for goodness sakes that trout injury really is a bummer too because people thought he was gonna have a big a big year and i i look i don't feel bad for the angels i i i don't like mike trout in anaheim i thought he should have left when his contract was up in game live prime time only on sports grid with the onset of NIL and the transfer portal, it is allowing players to develop further in college and guys that would maybe be stuck on the bench at a power program and not have as much shine are having the ability to find themselves in the spotlight. Wayne Kiffin came out and said you need to get bigger and more physical in terms of the offense and defense alliance, and that's why he went out and recruited that talent. Inside the transfer portal. Only on Sports Grid. And now you have to qualify and these majors. You, you just you gotta go do it, man. Like, and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like, I'm not. You know what you signed up for. So I, I don't like the pettiness. I'm um I I I a hundred percent think Taylor Gooch should be in the major championships. Mm -hmm. So in the same note, I'm saying this, but also it's like, hey, this is the world in which we live in right now, and, and you and you don't deserve anything. Only on Sports Grid.
Live right here on this Tuesday on the early line on Sports Grid. I am Ben Stevens. He is Donnie Wright's side, and Keith Stewart joins us now to preview a new week on the PGA Tour as we look forward to going up to the Great White North, the RBC Canadian Open. Keith, thanks, thanks so much for taking the time to join us here on this Tuesday. Hope you had a lovely Memorial Day weekend. It was fantastic, boys. There was some sensational golf out there in Texas, but now we're going up to Canada. It's a national open. Even the ladies have the national open this week. It's going to be a cool week for golf. Can't wait to get into it with you. The United States Open for the women on tour this week as well. And Nelly Corda, who is doing dominant things, almost akin to Scotty Scheffler. We will discuss her prowess for the U.S. Open this week. But of course, Keith, it was a difficult weekend in the world of golf as well. If you followed anything that happened in Dallas at the Charles Schwab Challenge, you've heard about the passing of Grayson Murray, who uh, was a PGA Tour winner even as early as this year. It was a somber, memorable week on the PGA Tour. Keith, we had you on to talk about the Scotty Scheffler situation a couple of weeks ago. Things that have happened yeah. outside of the ropes have really been a topic of conversation on the PGA Tour. How would you describe what you heard the atmosphere was like this week in dallas well it was definitely one uh, especially on something like memorial day weekend where we all tend to look and put things in perspective um to lose grayson murray at 30 years old you know it, it kind of gets swept under the rug from time to times how lonely the life can be out on tour and you know i travel to a ton of events you guys know that and when you're out there in the hotel scene and you don't have a lot of people to be with or you know you're just looking for things to do from time to time it, it just is certainly part of the lifestyle that doesn't really get much publicity. And it's obviously Grayson was dealing with some demons for a long, long time. I mean, this guy was an unbelievable junior golfer. He was extraordinary on the Corn Ferry Tour. He qualified for a Corn Ferry, Corn Ferry Tour event when he was 16 years old, guys. I mean, this guy was a tremendous talent. And he got caught up with some demons and depression. And it's really, truly a sad story. And, and for those guys out on tour that are traveling, even for the Scotty Schefflers, who are number one in the world, it's just a constant reminder of how difficult that lifestyle on the road can be from time to time. Yeah, and you saw how much he meant to a lot of those players and caddies on the tour as they were just revolving interviews there throughout the weekend of how much he meant to them and how sad they were to have it. But still, they had a golf tournament that was going on, and Davis Riley was the winner at 14 under par. You take a look at Scotty Scheffler. Hey, if you're not first, you're last, I guess. But he still placed second place in that event, which is something he's always done and machine-like here. Talk about last week's Charles Schwab Challenge on the court and how impressive it was for Davis Riley to win by five strokes there. Well, Donnie, he started the week at 350 to one. And Carver and I talked about this wow. last Wednesday on Golf Wednesdays. Um, you know, I had Davis Riley to kind of pop last week. I put him on my placement card. I did not have him to win, but he had been doing Davis Riley like things. You know, he won a year ago at the Zurich Classic in the team event with Nick Hardy. And then he kind of changed coaches and went on a little bit of a walkabout for six months. But over the last six weeks, he's shown some signs. He was good in Dallas. And I said, you know what? This is a perfect fit for him. He was once runner-up at Valspar down there at Innisbrook, which is a great comp, not only for Colonial, but for this week as well up at the RBC Canadian Open. So I put him on my card because you could get a nice 4-1 to number on a top 40. I mean, I mean, this guy was really off the grid. And all of a sudden, he pops up and he takes down Scheffler there in Texas in his hometown of Dallas. Uh, really an impre impressive stuff for Davis Riley. So now let's look at this week on the PGA Tour up in the Great White North. It's the RBC Canadian Open, and it's almost a Scotty Scheffler price on somebody that is often favored to win golf tournaments. Rory McIlroy, plus 350, Keith, for McIlroy, well ahead of everybody else in the field. Sahi Figala, second best number at 16-1. to Tommy Fleetwood, 18-1. to Is Rory deserving of such a short number entering the RBC Canadian Open? Well, you know, a lot of people are going to say no because Rory hasn't won um, e e enough times, you know, in this year or like in Scotty Fat, like they're comparing him to Scotty's number. But the fact of the matter is he's got those two wins in recent weeks. He didn't have a very good PGA championship. Maybe the controversy surrounding his divorce, I'm not quite sure. But the fact of the matter is, guys, at the RBC Canadian Open, Rory's won two of the last three. So does he deserve to be that short on a golf course where the last time we came to Hamilton Golf and Country Club was 2019 and Rory won with a Sunday 61 by seven strokes over the field. So I, 
I'm not sure if anyone's ever deserving of a number down there where Scotty and, and Rory are these days, but certainly um, you can try to justify it. Golf's in a really good spot here with superstar golfers dominating. That's what we really like to see. Scotty Scheffler on the men's side, but also let's not leave out the ladies here. The LPGA U.S. Open outright odds. Nelly Quarter a plus 350 price, followed by Zhang at 16 to 1. If we're looking at the U.S. Open for the ladies, is it Quarter and everybody else? Oh, it's definitely Corda and everyone else, Donnie. I mean, she's lost one time in the last 121 days. She's won six times in seven tournaments. And the way that a U.S. Women's Open is set up, that you have to be long there at Lancaster Country Club. It's over 6,600 yards. It's a par 70, a very, very difficult test. I mean, back in 2015, when they hosted the U.S. Women's Open before, Inji Chun won at eight under, and only 13 ladies were under par. This is a difficult Parkland-style golf course where power and finesse is really the keys to winning. I, I think it's going to be a very, very difficult task for anyone from the LPGA to beat to beat Nelly this week. It's not even so much how long and accurate she is off the tee, but she's first in the LPGA for short game. I mean, she's just unbelievable. She's top 25 with her putter. I mean, this is why she's won six and seven times. Uh, she's she's on an unbelievable run, and she's she's almost kind of picking up for women's sports where Caitlin Clark left off in April. I mean, it's just been a fantastic, fantastic uh, springtime for the LPGA and uh, the perfect timing coming into, you know, Lancaster just outside of Philadelphia. So up in a major metropolitan market for the women's open. Is Donnie making a trip out to the U S women's mm. open to see dominance in front of his very own two eyes and Nelly quarter this week at the U S women open U S women's open. We shall see mm -hmm. Keith. We appreciate the time as always to start off a new week here on the early line. Enjoy all the golf this week, the Canadian open on the PGA tour and the U S women's open as well at Lancaster golf club. I most certainly will guys. And Hey, the RBC Canadian open has six Canadians under 80 to one. Watch out for those guys. They could win mm. one back to back years. Don't forget that That's amazing surprised. Eagle by Nick Taylor last year in the playoffs. So enjoy all very the golf true. this week. Thanks very much. Keith Moore on the early line comes your way up next. Whether it's a charge or a block or a, a you know a, a deflection that was wrong or a foul that should have been called that what wasn't called or vice versa, give me a 48 minute report and people that will understand that there's so many mistakes that the referees make over the course of the game that referees, ready folks, don't decide the outcome. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. are these guys it's amazing they're supposed to be the greatest athletes in the world and yet they can't walk and chew gum at the same time without getting hurt for goodness sakes that trout injury really is a bummer too because people thought he was gonna have a big a big year and i i look i don't feel bad for the angels i i i don't like mike trout in anaheim i thought he should have left when his contract was up in game live prime time only on sports grid with the onset of NIL and the transfer portal, it is allowing players to develop further in college and guys that would maybe be stuck on the bench at a power program and not have as much shine are having the ability to find themselves in the spotlight. Wayne Kiffin came out and said you need to get bigger and more physical in terms of the offense and defense alliance, and that's why he went out and recruited that talent. Inside the transfer portal. Only on Sports Grid. And now you have to qualify, and these majors, you, you just you got to go do it, man. Like, and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like, "I'm not." You know what you signed up for, so I, I don't like the pettiness. And um, I, I 100% think Taylor Gooch should be in the major championships. Mm -hmm. So, in the same note, I'm saying this, but also it's like, hey, this is the world in which we live in right now, and and you, and you don't deserve anything. Only on Sports Grid.
Live right here on the early line on Sports Grid. It's time for a little puck talk on this Tuesday with your very own Ben Stevens and Donnie Wright side as we head to the ice to get you caught up with everything you need to know around the Stanley Cup postseason from the weekend that was. Game number three last night in Edmonton in the Western Conference Finals. A change of venue for the first time in the WCF. The Oilers jumped out to an early 2-0 lead after the opening period only for Dallas to score three early in the second. Two from Jason Robertson. The Oilers evened it up at three all after the second period. And then Robertson netted his third goal of the game for a hat trick in game number three of the Western Conference Finals. As Dallas on the road wins game three, five to three, as a short road underdog around a plus 108 money line number. Yeah, Connor McDavid getting an early goal in that one, extending that lead to two to nothing. That should have been all she wrote for the Edmonton Oilers to take a two to one series lead over Dallas. But then we saw three goals in the second period by Dallas, two goals in the third period, which the Edmonton Oilers didn't even score. That turns out from a 2 0 lead to a five to three loss here. It's a big time win for the Dallas Stars. And they're used to, I guess, losing games on their home ice. But now taking that two one series lead, you can really take control of this series by winning the next game in Edmonton before you can get back. Back to Dallas. We'll see if that does take place, but that's a bad loss for Edmonton. How they bounce yeah. back, that's going to be interesting to watch. 2 1 series lead now for Dallas, who lost the opening game on home ice to the Oilers to start off the Western Conference Finals to bounce back in game number two. The Stars victorious in game two on home ice. 3-1. to one. The Stars have had home ice advantage for all three of their playoff series now. They have lost at least the opening game in all three, but they do find that resilience. And entering game number three last night, DRS, as a slight road ice underdog, it was an even pick em on the money line to win the Western Conference Championship. Minus 110 for the Oilers, minus 110 for the Stars on the other side as Dallas wins maybe unexpectedly based on the odds on road ice in Game 3. The Stars now nearly a $3 favorite to win the Western Conference crown at minus 275. Yeah, and it should be that way because you did take back home ice advantage. You have the 2-1 series lead. You could take a 3-1 series lead in Edmonton, which we all but done for the series. So you should be a heavy favorite. And we're taking a look at the trustability factors, I'd like to say, between Edmonton and Dallas. Yeah. I just feel like Dallas is a little bit more trusting on the defensive side, even though, as you know, I root for Edmonton because I love the offensive firepower, which, again, yeah. was out in a big way. And that's 2 They get You're up 2-0 at home in a pivotal game number three. You can't let that get away, and they certainly let that happen yesterday. So no surprises. You're on the absolute price at this point hopefully we go seven games to talk about the series because it is a very good one here high scoring in game number three eight total goals the sh- yeah that's for sure over five and a half drs you could see what the stars are expected to do to win this series in five plus 240 but six not mm-hmm. all that far behind at plus 280 so if you think the stars win in six games but no more than that Minus one and a half in the series spread at minus 106 does make some sell, make some sense. I forgot a tough moment for the man known as Donnie Dreisaitl to see his Edmonton Oilers lose oh, game number oh, three and now have a 2-1 series deficit in the Western Conference Finals. Thanks for being here today despite your team losing game number three. Now we go to game number four on this Tuesday night in the Eastern Conference Finals. The Panthers at home a minus 176 home money line favorite but the Panthers down in the series. The Rangers, who were shut out in game number one, have won both games two and three in overtime, DRS. New York now has a 2-1 series advantage in the ECF. Incredible game, too. You had four total goals in the first period alone, let alone nine total goals, which are the Rangers win on the road in overtime. It's fun to watch this play out because, again, I do think we're headed possibly on a collision course for seven games, but the Rangers just continuously get it done here. Lafreniere, two goals in that past game. Reinhardt also, who has been on my betting card the past couple nights, two goals in that effort, but in a losing effort here. Maybe just the Rangers season Mm. this year. Continue to knock off teams that they're underdogs against, and now in that pole position of two to one in that series but you can see in the correct score market that things are not expected to end rather quickly every number pretty similar for how this series ends and who ends up winning it how many games we go and who is the eventual champ all of those prices separated by just 50 cents again the rangers 
an underdog tonight in game four. The Panthers expected yes. minus 176 on the money line to even this series at two games all. We'll look at the Stanley Cup odds a little bit later on. We should have a preview with Anna Dua in our third hour for everything around the ice in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Now it's Joe Madden, I was just told. All right, more on the early line next. Whether it's a charge or a block or a, a you know a, a deflection that was wrong or a foul should have been called that wasn't wasn't called or vice versa, give me a 48 minute report and people that will understand that there's so many mistakes that the referees make over the course of the game that referees ready folks don't decide the outcome. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. are these guys it's amazing they're supposed to be the greatest athletes in the world and yet they can't walk and chew gum at the same time without getting hurt for goodness sakes that trout injury really is a bummer too because people thought he was gonna have a big a big year and i i look i don't feel bad for the angels i i i don't like mike trout in anaheim i thought he should have left when his contract was up in game live prime time only on sports grid with the onset of NIL and the transfer portal, it is allowing players to develop further in college and guys that would maybe be stuck on the bench at a power program and not have as much shine are having the ability to find themselves in the spotlight. Wayne Kiffin came out and said you need to get bigger and more physical in terms of the offense and defense alliance, and that's why he went out and recruited that talent. Inside the transfer portal. Only on Sports Grid. And now you have to qualify and these majors, you, you just you gotta go do it, man. Like, and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like, I'm not. You know what you signed up for. So I, I don't like the pettiness. I'm um I I a hundred percent think Tabor Gooch should be in the major championships. Mm -hmm. So in the same note, I'm saying this, but also it's like, hey, this is the world in which we live in right now, and, and you and you don't deserve anything. Only on Sports Grid. Live right here on this Tuesday on the early line for the next half hour. We look back on what we have seen over the weekend in the NBA playoffs and project what we are going to see in game number four tonight in Dallas of the Western Conference Finals between the Mavs and the Timberwolves. We do that with our coach, his scouting report. It is James Young, JY, live right here on this Tuesday morning. JY, thanks for being here to kick off this new week. Good to be on with you guys. Uh, we got one team in the NBA Finals and uh, maybe one more coming up later tonight. Yep, both of the conference final series could be over rather quickly. In the Eastern Conference Finals, it was a Celtic sweep despite three of the four games being highly competitive. In game number four last night, it was a Derek White dagger in the final minute of regulation that pulled the Celtics away. 105-102, despite Indiana covering as a seven-and-a-half point underdog. 105-102, the victory for Boston. A Celtics sweep in a series we expected the Celtics to be dominant in, but that wasn't truly the full story. What did game four, JY, tell you about how this series played out, albeit in that C sweep? Honestly, you could make the case that we should we still should be playing. And we can make the case that Indiana could be up three games to one right now in this best of seven game series if it wasn't for the fact that they blew what three fourth quarter leads in the last five minutes. Um for a team that really just showed their inexperience, their inability to get stops. And I think the most amazing thing about the game last night, Ben, is like, out of all things, a Jalen Brown assist? Like the guy who barely passes it to himself actually made the right decision, drove the ball, got the corner three kick out, 
to Derek White for the dagger. But if you look at it, and we'll get more with this with, with Indiana, uh, this is a team on the come up, but there are things that need to be addressed uh, with this team, the ability to close out, maybe getting better defenders. But honestly, you got to kind of look at Rick Carlisle and some of the decisions that were made, uh, particularly in games one and game three, where at the very least, guys, this should be 2-2 two, two heading back to Boston, if not, like I said, 3-1 heading to Boston. Yeah, going over the win probabilities, Coach, in a couple of these games in the fourth quarter should have been easy victories for the Pacers, but weren't. Overcoming adversity is what the Celtics are doing. But let me ask you this question. Because the Celtics, Coach, aren't coming into the series or coming into the playoffs as the sixth seed. And wow, they got lucky. Everybody got injured who played against them, and here they are winding up in the finals. They were the best team in the NBA regular season here. Yes, they caught some breaks. Do we hold that against the Boston Celtics at this point? Like, we haven't seen them battle-tested, yet they were the number one overall seed with the best record in the NBA. How do we handle the Celtics moving forward at this point? I think you have to approach with a little bit of caution, guys. I'm, I'm not going to lie. They've not played their best basketball in these playoffs, and they have shown a propensity, guys, to turn it on and turn it off. And I just think you could do that when you play Miami without Jimmy Butler. You could do that the last couple of games with no Donovan Mitchell, no Jared Allen the entire series, no Karis LeVert uh, for game number five. You could do that with, uh, you know, Benedict, uh, not Benedict Matherin, Matherin being out, obviously, but Tyrese Halliburton missing the last, you know, what, game and a half, right? Two and a half games, you almost could say, because it was game two. Okay. They, they got to they, they gotta be better, guys. They have to be much better, in my opinion. If you even look at the game that Halliburton got hurt, it was a four-point game in the third quarter. It wasn't like they were up by 25 points when they got hurt. And Boston has shown to me that they have some things that need to be addressed. To me, it's their focus. And if they go into the NBA Finals, obviously most likely versus Dallas, and think that they're just going to do that, be able to go down big uh, baskets or be down eight, ten points with four minutes up to go, and you're looking at Luka and Kyrie on the other side of the court, they're not blowing those leads, guys. So Boston's got to tighten it up a little bit if they're going to win an NBA championship. So although three of the four games were way more competitive than we expected, Boston did win all four of those games. Could you argue the Celtics should have been more commanding in the way they did, especially without Halliburton for games three or four in Indianapolis? Certainly. Should they have covered as a seven-and-a-half-point favorite? Sure, yeah, for sure. But they still found ways to win a game. So, JY, one of the storylines will be how easy of a run it was through the East for the Boston Celtics. But all year long, back in the preseason, the Celtics were the co-favorites to win an NBA championship. They were expected to reach this point one way or another, and their season will ultimately be defined in the quest for number 18, the 18th Larry O'Brien Trophy in the history of this Celtics organization. You have said yourself, Boston has failed to play its best basketball so far in this postseason. If they are going to reach that mountaintop, what do the Celtics need to change to see that ceiling? I just think they need to be locked in for 48 minutes. Listen, Ben, I'm going to say this. If they play locked in basketball for 48 minutes, they're winning the NBA title. I, I, I'll openly say it. I just haven't seen it consistently enough in, in this postseason. And you're right. They have not been challenged. Now, listen, at the end of the day, you got to play who you got to play. Like, if it, you know, the, you, you can't control what happens to the team. You got to control what you do. I just think I haven't been impressed with the way they've looked as of late. Who knows, Ben? Can they turn it on? Absolutely. Could Dallas be running out of steam, if, especially if, you know, Minnesota finds a way to win a couple of games here? Yes. But to me, I just – I don't like their their lack of focus. To me, uh, the game three was more concerning than game four, to be down that big. Now, listen, I'm not going to lie. In the third quarter, I knew they were going to come back because I knew that they could dial in. I just worry that they won't be able to make these big runs down 15 third quarter, 18 third quarter, down eight minutes left to go – with five minutes left to go in the game. I'm concerned that they're not going to be able to do that versus Dallas. 
We take a look at Jalen Brown and how well he played and also the Eastern Conference Finals MVP, and deservedly so. He played those four games here, was ultra-efficient, and also had a lot of shot attempts. 10 of 20, 14 of 27, 10 of 18, 11 of 22, which equated to 26 points, 40 points, 24 points, and 29 points. If we are going to get this type of effort out of Jalen Brown in the NBA Finals, good luck, because you know Tatum is going to be there in the mid-20s and or higher along with him, and also getting back Chris Tapps Porzingis. Talk to me about the motivation factor for Jalen Brown, who is clearly upset that he didn't make any all-NBA teams, but yet shows out and gets the hardware for the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah, I mean, he did so, and I think, folks, I, I thought that, honestly, it was Tatum until, I think, Brown stole it in the second half by going 7 of 11 for the floor in the second half, whereas Tatum went 4 of 12. I thought it was close. It was Nick, you know, it was back and forth who could be MVP, but I think the way Jalen closed in the second half particularly going three or five from three is how we won this. Now, you could argue, to me, do I think he deserved to be on the All-NBA teams? I, I don't I don't think so, but it was close. Who is he taking off? It, you know, Devin Booker? Tyrese Halliburton? Not Brunson? Not SGA? Not Luka? So, to me, it got really close. He was probably, like, the next guy that didn't make it in regards to the guard spot. So, great year out of Jalen Brown, but... His ability, and here's the thing, Brown and Tatum, you said, Ben said the best, it, they're going to be judged. No one cares about that, what happened all year. The next four to seven games that they play is going to be what they're judged on. And can they bring it in an NBA Finals? Sometimes they have propensities to give you four for 16s. They have to do it now. This is their time. Their team is lined up. This is their window. They need to go out there and play their best basketball and get this NBA Finals. And if they do so, guys, probably six games or less, they win it all. They'll have some time to reassess and figure how they got through these three rounds and now have the chance to win an 18th NBA championship because game one of the NBA Finals, regardless of what happens out West, is not until a week from Thursday. That's nine days away, Thursday, mm. June 6th. By the way, Jason Tatum, even money favorite at the moment, plus 100 to win the NBA Finals MVP. Luka Doncic has the second best number, then Jalen Brown at plus 450 to win the Finals MVP mm. after winning the ECF. MVP award over his teammate from Boston last night. Now we'll go to the Western Conference Finals. How we have reached this fourth game next. Whether it's a charge or a block or, a, a, you know, a, a deflection that was wrong or a foul that should have been called that wasn't called or vice versa. Give me a 48-minute report. And people that will understand that there's so many mistakes that the referees make over the course of games that referees, ready folks, just don't decide the outcome. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. are these guys it's amazing they're supposed to be the greatest athletes in the world and yet they can't walk and chew gum at the same time without getting hurt for goodness sakes that trout injury really is a bummer too because people thought he was gonna have a big a big year and i i look i don't feel bad for the angels i i i don't like mike trout in anaheim i thought he should have left when his contract was up in game live prime time only on sports grid with the onset of NIL and the transfer portal, it is allowing players to develop further in college and guys that would maybe be stuck on the bench at a power program and not have as much shine are having the ability to find themselves in the spotlight. Ray Gifford came out and said you need to get bigger and more physical in terms of the offense and defense lines, and that's why he went out and recruited that talent. Inside the transfer portal. Only on Sports Grid. And now you have to qualify in these majors. 
you, you just you got to go do it, man. Like, and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like, I'm not. You know what you signed up for. So I, I don't like the pettiness. I'm, um, I, I, I 100% think Taylor Gooch should be in the major championships. Mm -hmm. So in the same note, I'm saying this, but also it's like, hey, this is the world in which we live in right now, and, and, you, and you don't deserve anything. Only on Sports Grid. So the Celtics sweep in the Eastern Conference Finals, winning the ECF in only four games. Might we see the same in the Western Conference, where the Dallas Mavericks have a 3-0 series advantage ahead of game number four tonight in Dallas, and the Mavericks are a slight home favorite. But, J.Y., before we preview game number four and get your full breakdown and thoughts for this fourth game tonight, Let's look back on the previous three games. Two of them since we all last spoke on the early line a week ago. Friday night in Minneapolis, the Luka Doncic dagger over Rudy Gobert that completed a 32-point triple-double. And then Luka backed it up with 33 in game number three. Kyrie also added in 33 points as the Mavs won on their own home floor, 116-107. Covering is just a one and a half point favorite jy what has been the biggest thing that has stood out to you as to why dallas has won all three games well simply put their two superstars are playing better than the supposed superstars on the other side i mean what luke and Kyrie are doing you know with Kyrie averaging 27.7 luke at 32.7 is the ability man that i think is really impressive is this dynamic duo is the ability of trading roles who's the batman who's the robin who who is the guy that takes over games? You've seen periods, and I would say halves, when it's been Kyrie that's taken over games. You look at game one, uh, and then uh, and then you look at you know the, the second half of Luca there. So to me, they've been really really good. And and you know for the flip side, uh, the play of Anthony Edwards has been uh, subpar at best at times, and that's great comparing to what you're talking about, Carl Anthony Towns who looks like he just turned into a pumpkin, shooting 27.8% for four. And the self-proclaimed greatest big man shooter of all time, shooting a whopping, I think I saw that right on the graphic, 13.6%. That is not going to get it done. Those two have struggled this entire series, although I do think some of the struggles can also be attributed to to coaching errors, particularly having what happened at the end of that Luker Dodge dagger in game number three. It's one thing, Coach, to be down, you know, 3-0 in a series and say, all right, man, we're just getting beat by the better team here. We're giving our A effort every night. They're just a little bit better. But we haven't seen that here. And we're not taking any credit away from the Mavericks because it is tough to beat a team and be up 3-0, specifically of the ilks of the Minnesota Timberwolves. But hear me out on this. What has to change and what can change? Because you're right. Like, Carl Anthony Towns, wide open three-point shots. He should be knocking down at least 40% of those slightly. And also, take a look at Anthony Edwards, where you might say he's a younger player. But earlier in the playoffs, he was absolutely sensational. We haven't seen that from him yet. If I am looking to back the Minnesota Timberwolves in a game tonight, Coach, what has to change and what can I look forward to with? Is it just so simple of those two guys playing better or other guys stepping up around them? I, Donnie, I, I don't, I don't know if I can trust Cat right now. I mean, nope. it, it, I, I felt, guys, I generally felt bad for Carl Anthony Towns watching them shoot those threes, particularly in the second half of game number three. Because you know what, guys? Like, the, it looked like he shot him because he had to, right? Not because he wanted to, right? He was open. He had to shoot it. There was no confidence. There was, there was no belief in, like, as he let it go, you're like, all right, this is going in. Because you guys know how it is. Y'all are ballers too, right? Shooters going to shoot. Mm -hmm. And you got to believe that you're always one shot away from getting going. But when you are Carl Anthony Towns in the last three games, you are three for 22 from three-point range. Guys, I've seen it as a coach. Guys have doubts. Guys question themselves. Guys don't believe that it's going to go in. So when you're Chris, when you're Coach Finch, like, do you get this guy out of the game? Do you go to 
a Nas Reed, who I could say has been the second best player from Minnesota. Check that at times, their best player this series. Do you give Nas Reed more run? I think so. Now, at the expense of who? Is it Go Bear? I mean, you can't complain about Rudy because Rudy's going to do what Rudy's going to do. It's got to be Cat. So now you got a guy that going into the season was going to get traded, right? It wasn't going to work. Then the whole season, they played great. Now we're back to, oh my goodness, this guy is like the Tobias Harris of the Midwest. We can't get rid of him fast enough. So to me, you got to get Cat to play a lot better, but other guys have to step up, including the head coach. It seems like Carl Anthony Towns could benefit from getting in the lab back in his native Garden State with one coach, Jay Wide, and learn how to find his confidence in the three ball mm-hmm. again. You want to trust a big to shoot a three? Go to the other big from New Jersey, Nas Reed, who made seven triples in game number two to keep the Timberwolves in that basketball game, ultimately before Luka Doncic did hit the game winner under five ticks remaining in regulation. I thought that was a very sound question from one DRS. Is there anything that Minnesota can kind of hang its hat on to think that they can get back in this series? So, J.Y., is there anything Minnesota can do to get back in this series? Mm. How long do you see the Western Conference Finals playing out at this point? Well, I said Minnesota in seven, so I need them to get going starting tonight if I think that this is going to happen. Listen, at the end of the day, you have to be better. And honestly, you know, as much as I've, I've kind of gone after Cat, I mean, I, I think Anthony Edwards hasn't valued the basketball either. I mean, he's made some boneheaded mistakes and boneheaded plays, particularly with his passing, that he must be much, much better than. So... You're going to get the best effort. I think you may see more of Nas Reed. We'll talk about the props in the, in the next segment. Uh, but you need, honestly, you need Ant-Man to give you a, an Ant-Man performance that we have not seen, what, guys, in like six games? So we need something. We need a 35-piece. Yeah. We need him to be the best player on the floor, hands down, and take the ball to the rack with reckless abandonment and let him go. Maybe, you know, the fact that we'll see what happens with Lively, who's been really good. Maybe Lively with the neck that can kind of give you more ability to attack the basket because he's been really good. But at the end of the day, you got to lean on your superstar because honestly, I can't say stars because I can't put Cat in that conversation because he's got no confidence right now. Anthony Edwards has actually been under 27 and a half in now. Uh, six consecutive games and the times he has been over he has scored 33 plus but three of those times came in the first four games of the postseason and that opening round sweep over phoenix will we see a fifth game what happens in game four find Mm. out now Whether it's a charge or a block or, a, a, you know, a, a deflection that was wrong or a foul that should have been called that wasn't, wasn't called or vice versa. Give me a 48-minute report. And people that will understand that there's so many mistakes that the referees make over the course of the game that referees, ready folks, don't decide the outcome. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. are these guys it's amazing they're supposed to be the greatest athletes in the world and yet they can't walk and chew gum at the same time without getting hurt for goodness sakes that trout injury really is a bummer too because people thought he was gonna have a big a big year and i i look i don't feel bad for the angels i i i don't like mike trout in anaheim i thought he should have left when his contract was up in game live prime time only on sports grid With the onset of NIL and the transfer portal, it is allowing players to develop further in college and guys that would maybe be stuck on the bench at a power program and not have as much shine are having the ability to find themselves in the spotlight. Wayne Kiffin came out and said you need to get bigger and more physical in terms of the offense and defense lines, and that's why he went out and recruited that talent. Inside the transfer portal. Only on Sports Grid. 
and now you have to qualify in these majors you, you just you got to go do it man like and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like i'm not you know what you signed up for so i, I don't like the pettiness i'm um i i, I 100 think taylor gooch should be in the major championships mm -hmm. so in the same note i'm saying this but also it's like hey this is the world in which we live in right now and, and, you, and you don't deserve anything only on sports grid Game four of the Western Conference Finals tonight in Dallas between the Minnesota Timberwolves and those Mavericks. Is it over tonight with the Mavs holding a 3-0 series advantage over Minnesota entering this fourth game? The odds makers tend to think so, but it's not the strongest ever spread we have seen for a game four. Dallas just a two-point home favorite, now minus 126 on the money line. The total the highest we have seen so far in any of the, any of the four games in this set the over-under stands at 211. So let's start there, JY. Is this series over tonight? And if not, what is the advantage the Timberwolves take advantage of to at least get their first victory in the Western Conference Finals? I'm going down on my sword. They're winning tonight. This series is not over. I believe in Minnesota. I believe in, in my Jersey guys. Well, I believe in one Jersey guy. His name is Nas Reed. Sorry, he's from Asbury Park. Monmouth County, stand up. We in the building. North Jersey, Carl, Anthony Towns. I'm sorry, I ain't riding you no more, brother. I done left that train station oh, uh, after the last game. But that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Nasty Nas Reed is going to come in here. But, Ben, you're making a, a point here. I heard you. The over-under being 210 and a half. If we get more Nas Reed, less defense especially if he plays for Rudy Gobert, Ben, mm. over 210 and a half. I like that. I think there's going to be points tonight. Taking a look at some of those prop bets, and again, I do like Nas Reed over 12 and a half currently at the FanDuel Sportsbook at a minus 128. But if we focus on big picture guys, the Anthony Edwards and also Luka Doncic here, we look at those price points here like, oh, Luka's got to get to the 30s. Trust me tonight. If the Dallas Mavericks are going to close out this series, I believe Luka Doncic is going to have a monster game tonight, which includes the possibility of a triple-double. But coach, the possibility of a triple-double on the opposite side is 27-1 to 1 right now on Anthony Edwards, who got oh so close in his last game. And you're right with me on this. If I'm going to lose a basketball game and if I'm Anthony Edwards, it's going to be because I lost the game, not because Nas Reed wasn't making nine or ten three-point shots to sort of bail us out. How do we look at some of those prop bets on your side? Oh, I'm going Ant-Man. Ant-Man going yeah. and two guns tonight. Two guns. <laughs> I mean, he's going to be shooting every time. He's not, don't look at it. That six and a half assists, don't touch it. If, I, if there's a shot prop, I'm taking over tonight for Ant-Man. I think he's going to get the ball up and shoot it a ton. Hey, listen, I told you, the jersey in the building. Now it's Reed, over 12 and a half mm. points. Over last three, five out of seven. Carl Anthony Towns, North Jersey. We're not talking to you. Right, Donnie, you know this because you know that there's, you know, North, Central, and South Jersey. So I'm going to focus on okay. Central Jersey, the Jersey Shore right now because you, you, you're you geographically challenged with our state. That's okay. We'll talk about that later. But I like Nasri over 12 and a half, and I'll give you one more Jersey guy. I'll go to North Jersey for him. Kyrie Irving over his points prop tonight. Close out games, 22, mm -hmm. 30, 25. He's got a 27, a 28, a 26, a 30, a 31 in his career. I think Kyrie could be the guy tonight. Kyrie over his points prop, Nas Reed over his points prop, and Edwards over his points prop, and over the game to 10 and a half. A Jersey flair to the prop predictions yeah. of one James Young. One and a half made threes for Nas Reed. That is the number. The over has the juice at minus 148. Only one made triple in game three, despite scoring 14 and going over what that points prop is set at for tonight at 12 and a half. But I do want to go back to those Mavericks props because you like Kyrie's over 23 and a half. He has been over with at least 30 in two of the three games, never less than 20 in any of the three contests so far in the WCF. But if Kyrie goes over and Luca approaches his points prop once again, 
Can the Timberwolves win this basketball game and force at least a trip back to Minneapolis? One, they need they need to slow down Luka, to be honest with you. If Luka gets near 30 and Kyrie gets 25, 28 points, Ben, that, that, that's a lot. Unless you play the whole adage of we let the top two players score and then we lock down everybody else. P.J. Washington doesn't do anything. We limit Gafford. We limit Jones. We, we limit everyone else. We just focus on the fact of letting those two guys get the points, and then we shut everybody else out. You can do that if you're Minnesota. But it doesn't matter if it does not have a huge performance. If Nas Reed can't give you what he's giving you, and if Carl Anthony Towns shoots it one for 248,152 mm. from three, you're not going to win. Carl's got to hit a couple yeah. threes. Nas has got to go to work, and Ant-Man has got to be that man tonight. It's going to be the test for Minnesota to survive a fourth game and force a game five for two sweeps in both of the conference finals. Maybe so. Fade away to the break, and hour three is up next. Both.